Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit triveanderson.com. Well, we've managed to see a little late day clearing, which has allowed our temperature to go from 43 now up to 45, still below average. But at least we're on the right track here as those numbers are going up and then some numbers going down. 42 right now in Freeport, 41 in Monroe, 45 here in Rockford, and 43 our current temperature in Rochelle. When you factor in the wind, however, wind chill numbers are down in the 30s, so still a little cool out there. And we'll maintain that mostly cloudy sky, although a couple of breaks in that cloud cover starting to take shape on the backside of that low pressure system. Now we did have some scattered rain activity earlier today along with some snow. For the most part, that should be coming to an end as that low pressure system uh, pulls further away from us. Temperatures tonight are in the lower 30s underneath a mostly cloudy sky. We'll see return of sunshine, but then some rain soon to follow. Find out when the raindrops will come down. Coming up in the first warn forecast a little later. Charges are filed after a DeKalb County Sheriff's deputy is killed in a crash. The announcement comes as funeral services for the officer are held. A plus a state line event works to get parolees back on their feet. How one ex exhibition is giving ex-convicts a second lease on life. And a local museum honors a Civil War veteran. The site of his final resting place now memorialized. Live from WTVO 17. This is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm David Greenberg. A fallen DeKalb County Sheriff's deputy is laid to rest. People came to honor Deputy Christina Musil. The public was invited to her memorial service this morning, followed by a law enforcement walkthrough, where those who knew her spoke of her love for her family and her community. Christina leaves behind three children. Family and friends say her loss is one that won't soon be forgotten. Your departure has left a void that will never be filled. <sighs> but the luminosity of your spirit will forever light my path. Deputy Christina Muscle, you are a true hero. You will not be forgotten. And your memory will live on through your family and your brothers and sisters in blue. Muscle had been with the department for five years. She served in Afghanistan with the U.S. Army as well as military police officer in the Army National Guard for four years. Well, the man accused of slamming into the back of Deputy Muscle's squad car, killing her, is now in custody. Police say that Nathan Sweeney was driving under the influence. ISP arrested him for aggravated driving under the influence and reckless homicide. Police say Deputy Muscle was parked on the shoulder of Route 23 last Thursday when Sweeney's truck ran off the road, then crashing into her. Muscle was taken to Kishwaukee Hospital, where she later died. Sweeney is now being held in the Ogle County Jail. For people convicted of crimes, life after paying your penalty can be tough. Yeah, from finding a job to a place to live, there can be a lot of roadblocks. Today, a special summit guided those facing some challenges. Andrea Peroni was there. Andrea, organizers say the day was really all about hope. Yeah, David, for about 500 parolees, that's right, they filled up the UW Sports Factory. There were dozens of tables set up. They represented anything from housing to health care, jobs to mental health services. But that's not it. Parolees were able to get their hair cut, a state ID, and help create a resume. It's really a one-stop shop meant to knock out any barricades that could get in the way of a second chance. Michael Gaines is a coordinator for the Summit of, of Hope. He says the meaning of this event is all in its name. The event used to be called Reentry Fair, or Corrections Reentry Fair. And on one of the surveys that came back from one of the parolees, it said, continue to give us hope from those of us who have lost hope. And we changed the name to the Summit of Hope because that's what it's all about, is getting them tied back to their community and to give them that link of hope so they can stay back in their community instead of going back to prison. This is the first time Summit of Hope has come to Rockford since COVID. It kicks off the organization's event for this year. And the group doesn't just help people in the state line. Summit of Hope has, helped two, has held 200 events throughout Illinois. Coming up at 6, a local judge explains how summit, the summit impacts more than just parolees. David. All right, Jarea, thank you. Great to see them getting their life back on track. Well, mixed numbers now coming in on the job market. New claims for unemployment benefits rising by 9,000 last week to 221,000. Those remaining on benefits and continuing claims dropped 19,000 to about 1.79 million. 
Outplacement firm Challenger Grand Christmas says there were about 90,000 job cuts announced last month. That's the highest level since January of last year. Most of those cuts were from technology firms and the U.S. government. The monthly employment report is set to be released tomorrow morning. The trucking industry is fighting back against strict new federal emission standards for heavy-duty vehicles. The EPA is cracking down on emissions from vehicles like highway big rigs. The agency insists the new rules give the industry time to adjust. They start taking effect in 2027 and ramp up through 2032. But the companies that own those big rigs are not happy. The American Trucking Association argues most companies can't afford the transition. Talking about real people putting food on the table, they're going to be paying 10 times more for it and they're going to get half the choices. These new technologies will ultimately make these trucks cheaper to operate. Supporters of the change insist it would be a mistake to slow down standards that will benefit public health and the economy. A major local construction project is officially underway. Phase 1A of the Whitman Street reconstruction project began today. School Street from Kilburn Avenue to Underwood Street will be closed for work. Local residents will still have full access to their homes during the closure. Businesses will also remain open throughout construction. This phase is expected to be complete by August. Well, Stateline residents learned more about the changes coming to a nearby roadway. IDOT holding an open house session for their rebuild I-39 project. Community members can meet the project team and share suggestions on how to move forward. Open house goes until 6.30 tonight at Suite L114 in the Cherryvale Mall. A Rockford Museum honors a veteran over 100 years after his death. The Ethnic Heritage Museum held a gravestone dedication ceremony at Cedar Bluff Cemetery. The event celebrated the life and service of Private Robert Parker. In 1823, Parker was born a slave in Missouri and later escaped to Detroit. He then served with the 102nd United States Army Colored Troops during the Civil War. Parker moved to Rockford and was buried on April 4, 1891 at Cedar Bluff, but without a headstone. After working with the local and federal Veterans Administration, a headstone was created for him. I feel good. Uh, I feel good. I hope he's looking down and feel very pleased because I'm not sure he had a, 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 a send off this big when he originally died. But to think now that the state senator, alderman, um, a retired judge, um, directors of many different organizations came here to uh, show their respects says a lot for the community and it shows you know, what he, uh, what he could have accomplished. The Ethnic Heritage Museum hopes this event brings more awareness to other organizations working to pay their respects to fallen veterans. Well, Israel is now promising an investigation following a deadly airstrike in Gaza. After the break, the announcement comes as President Biden speaks with the Israeli Prime Minister. And coming up at 6, a pair of state bills looks to bolster local journalism. How one social media company is responding to the proposal. We're starting to see some breaks in the cloud cover here late this afternoon and eventually we'll see more sunshine in the days to come. But we also have some rain to time out too. A look at that and our current flood watches and warnings coming up in the first warn forecast a little later. Well, fallout continues following the deadly airstrikes that killed seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen. Israeli officials say a thorough investigation is currently being conducted. All this as a consequential call between President Biden and Israel's Prime Minister gets underway. Ike Jachi is in Washington with more. President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speaking on the phone for the first time since seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen were killed by an Israeli airstrike. Biden making it clear that Israel needs to take a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps immediately to address civilian harm. He made clear that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action on these steps. Biden also telling Netanyahu that the incident is unacceptable, adding that an immediate ceasefire is essential for stabilizing and improving the humanitarian situation and protecting innocent civilians. He urged Prime Minister Netanyahu to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal without delay to bring the hostages home. 
The call comes as the Pentagon begins to speak out against Israel's actions. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin also speaking to his Israeli counterpart on the phone. Austin echoing what's been heard from the Biden administration, calling on Israel to immediately take concrete steps to protect aid workers and Palestinians in Gaza. IDF officials telling Austin that a thorough and transparent investigation is currently being conducted and that once it's finished, the results will be shared. Israel's defense minister has called the airstrike on the WC K truck a grave mistake that was not carried out with the intention of harming aid workers. World Central Kitchen speaking out against the attack. Its founder and renowned chef Jose Andres accusing the IDF of systematically targeting humanitarian aid vehicles. World Central Kitchen and other humanitarian aid organizations have now paused operations in Gaza over safety concerns. The family is real. Uh, war is complicated. The situation in Gaza is complicated. Biden and Netanyahu also discussed public Iranian threats against Israel. Biden also made it clear that the United States strongly supports Israel in the face of those threats. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Flood watches continue as stateline cities monitor water levels. Up next, Candace tells us about our break from the rain ahead of the weekend. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, we have kind of gotten rid of some of the snow showers and the rain showers we had from earlier today. We still have some cloud cover. However, we've had some breaks in some of the clouds across parts of the area. It's a mostly cloudy sky out over our SkyTrack camera at the Park Hills Golf Course in Freeport. You notice the flag whipping in the wind as we're still dealing with that northerly breeze and some puddles here with the recent rain that we've had and that rain causing some issues with flooding. This in particular is uh, from the Yellow Creek. So this is out in the rural Pearl City Freeport area along Becker School Road and Lauren Road um, where the Yellow Creek has kind of come up. I know our weather watcher Megan out in Pearl City shared some of these pictures here of the flooding that has been taking place and some of the water actually coming up too and even over the roads. It's beginning to recede just a bit and over time it will continue to do so but it's just a testament to just, just how much rain uh, and moisture we've had over the last several days and of course the added snow and the melting and then that runoff and all all of that going into a lot of our uh, local rivers here, which has caused those levels to go up as well. The good news, we're drying out. Now, we do have some rain showers that will work back in here towards late Saturday night and Sunday, but I don't think the rain that comes in will really be anything that'll be too significant to cause even a further rise in some of the rivers here. If anything, it'll probably keep them and maybe just slow them just a bit from receding. We're still on the tail end of that low pressure system, but the cloud cover with the drier air, we're starting to break some of that out. Now, I think we keep a partly to mostly cloudy sky overnight tonight, but as high pressure gradually builds in, we'll be able to see some sunshine here as we look towards this time tomorrow. Now we do have flood watches and flood warnings that continue for the Rock Pecatonica as well as for the Kishwaukee River. The brighter green, those are flood warnings. The dark green, that's a flood watch. So a lot of our rivers right now getting close to minor flood stage and expected to crest within the next few days. In minor flood stage, the exception would be the Rock River up near Rockton and up around Latham Park that is expected to kind of go into moderate flood stage here late into the weekend. So we'll continue to kind of watch as that drainage uh, continues into some of the rivers. Some of the adjustments with the crest uh, stages and levels and times will kind of be adjusted here as we head into the weekend. But nonetheless, we've got some flooding that has been taking place. So it'll be nice to kind of dry things out. And I think we see a little more of that as we head into next week. 45 our current temperature here in Rockford. We've got a wind though and that wind comes in and keeps our wind chill factors down into the 30s for a lot of us. Our weather watcher Terry down in Genoa 41 degrees. Uh, rain snow mix just under a tenth of an inch. Northerly wind now at 16 miles per hour. As we go through time with future cast notice we break up some of the cloud cover here as we head throughout the day tomorrow. Temperatures I think are in the low to mid 40s tomorrow afternoon. High pressure builds in and that allows to see some sunshine as we get into the first half of our weekend. Now Saturday's high temperature 50 54 degrees, but cloud cover comes back in Saturday night. This will bring us a return of some rainfall for the first half of the day on Sunday, maybe even a rumble of thunder too, but notice our temperatures, they are back into the 60s. And I think right now it looks like we may have some good clearing, at least a partly cloudy sky for our 
partial total eclipse coming up Monday early afternoon. I was going to say all eyes on that uh, partial total eclipse there for Monday. Candace, thanks. Scott's in next with sports. He sits down with Lloyd Carp Sky Carp manager Billy Gardner Jr. Get a feel for this year's team one day before their season opener. And the Cubs put up lots of runs this week. Should we expect a bit more of that? Scott will ask. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Minor League Baseball will return to the state line tomorrow evening. The Beloit Sky Carp will play their season opener at ABC Supply Stadium against the Cedar Rapids Colonels. The game will mark the start of a three-game weekend series. The 29-man Sky Carp roster includes 21 guys who played for the Sky Carp last season. Manager Billy Gardner Jr. is also back for his second season overseeing the team. I asked him today what fans can expect offensively from this group. I think we have a little bit of, you know, everything. I want to say, you know, we're, we're blessed with a lot of team speed. Um, yeah, I, I want to say we're blessed with a lot of power. Um, but that's stuff that, you know, the power of something that could show up with some guys. Um, but we're going to have to be, we're going to have to be tough outs one through nine. Uh, they're going to have to pull on the same end of the rope. Uh, competitive at-bats, grind at-bats out. Be really good situational, hitting-wise. And, be able to, and manufacture runs. Tomorrow's game will start at 6.35. The game Saturday and Sunday will start at 1.05. Well, the White Sox are set to play ball tonight in Kansas City. Michael Soroka will be the Sox starting pitcher. The Cubs have tonight off. They're going to host the Dodgers tomorrow afternoon. That should be a lot of fun. Cubs showed a lot of punch in their series sweep of the Rockies this week. They put 26 runs on the board in the three games. And they did all that despite the cold, rainy weather. You're distracted, I think, by the cold as, as much as in the rain and the wet. Um, and um, it's just something else that's in your head. And I think playing the game is just hard enough, right? Um, and, and you can't, you know, it's hard to predict who's going to be the one that it, that has a harder time. But it's it's going to happen like, like a fielder has a harder time or, or a hitter has a harder time. So, you know, you just got to outlast it. Well, the season of Caitlin Clark continues in women's college basketball. Now she's been named the AP Player of the Year. Clark has averaged 32 points per game. She came up one vote short of being a unanimous choice. She's only the fifth player in history to win this award in back-to-back -back seasons. At Sports, we'll be right back. Well, it's nice to see some. the skies are clearing just a little bit. Yeah. Finally. So you're ahead of the <laughs> weekend, too, no there. less. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. We've got some sunshine, I think, to start us off. If you got weekend plans, Saturday, I think, is going to be the better day um, out of the two because cloud cover comes back in Saturday night. We've got some rain showers for Sunday. So temperatures will be a little cooler as a result of that. But the 60s return next week, so that'll be nice. And so a lot of eyes on Monday, too. I That's guess. the big one. Right. Our, our uh, weather intern, Eric, and I were actually working on a graphic to talk a little bit about the solar yeah. eclipse and the cloud cover for that and what's really interesting is even if you do have a cloudy sky the cloud type uh, depends on whether or not you're going to be able to see it so do you have uh, cirrus clouds or stratus clouds um, right now it looks like we may be partly cloudy to partly sunny so fingers crossed even if we've got some cloud cover we might still be able to see that of course we're not in the path of totality but where locations are i think there'll be some clearing i know jordan and joy are heading out <laughs> uh, there uh, early next week and again 60s by next week Thanks, Candace. World News Tonight's up next. We'll see you back here at 6.